Yo, what is going on guys? It's Toby here and a bunch of people have been asking for a full manual tutorial So Devin and I are gonna jump in the Mustang today and give you guys the full rundown One last little quick thing before we jump in the car So we have these Mickey Thompson Street SS those are gonna be slapped on real soon with these forged star bead locks We've got suspension mods and headers So there's a whole bunch of mods that we have to do to Sally Honestly, it's just a matter of finding time to do so we also have to give away this engine cover that's long overdue I got to ship that off and we actually took off the four GT style taillights. Devin, what are you doing, man? Dance oh, move? Shit. Oh, my bad. You didn't start recording yet. But a couple of days ago, we decided to change out those four GT taillights over there for the OEM ones. Honestly, it looks way more aggressive, and when you unlock the car, you can really see the difference. One little problem that we have here is that I did not wire the reverse light correctly, so I do need to take the car in to the guy who originally installed it to get that all sorted out. Let's get on with the manual driving tutorial, though. So the straight up first thing that you need to get familiar with when you get inside a manual car are something called the prerequisites. First things first, you wanna have appropriate footwear. So Yeezys absolutely suck. You're looking for a flat bottom shoe, something like Vans. This basically ensures that you have maximum contact with the clutch pedal, which happens to be the third pedal from the right. In a manual car, you have both the gas, the brake, and the clutch. You need to remember this. Next up to start the car, what you wanna do is go ahead and make sure that this is in neutral so the car doesn't lurch forward and you want to put down the clutch pedal which is the third pedal to the left and hit that ignition simple as that once you get the car started obviously you want to start rolling so this is called your handbrake a lot of people struggle with releasing this thing but it's super simple they yank on it like crazy all you need to do is just push up while pressing down the little tab and it goes straight down Super simple, don't make it complicated. Now don't forget your seatbelt, safety first, right Devin? Safety first. In order to get moving, you wanna do clutch down and you wanna go to first gear. So first gear is to the left and you just push up. Before we get moving, I'm actually gonna show you guys every gear. So this is first, up to the left. Don't pay attention to the shift knob, it's super crooked. And then to go to second, you just go back. Third is up and to the right, kind of. Fourth is straight back from third. And then fifth is once again like going to third, you push to the right, that's fifth, and this is sixth. Oh, MT82, there you go, let me in. <laughs> now back to getting rolling in first gear. So third pedal down, we're gonna clutch all the way down, go to first, which is up to the left once again, and we're gonna slowly release the clutch and blip the throttle. So what I mean by blipping the throttle is giving it a little bounce and revs. I'm giving it like 1800 RPMs, and that'll get the car moving smoothly. Something that's going to help you get really good at rolling into first gear smoothly is getting familiar with the bite point of the car. So if you let up the clutch, this is the point at which the RPMs start to fall. You can see it right there. The car will actually start moving at the bite point as well. So this is the bite point for this car. It varies with every car. So once again, we're going to practice getting into first gear. So I'm going to go ahead and clutch down, go to first, and this lady's blocking my view, so I have no idea if any cars are coming. <laughs> Take two here. So clutch in, go into first gear. I'm going to release to the buy point, throttle blip, and it's smooth as that. It's not hard to do at all. It's just a matter of practice. Now the goal when rolling into first gear is to be as smooth as possible, but don't take forever because then you're slipping the clutch. You want to be discreet. You want to be fast and get the job done. Get that clutch out and start rolling. Now we're gonna progress on to shifting gears when you're driving. So when do you shift? Well, the car is gonna start making weird noises as so. So this is around 2,500 RPMs and you need to go to the next gear. If you don't do so, you're just riding out your RPMs and ruining your MPGs and you don't wanna do that. So in order to do a simple gear change, all you need to do is put the clutch in, go to the desired gear. So for example, we're going third to fourth. We just did that and then you release the clutch. When you release the clutch, you don't wanna dump it all the way. You want to release it with some moderate pace but you don't want to be too slow if you're too slow you're slipping the clutch and burning the f out of it <laughs> this is basically to exemplify how fast i'm releasing the clutch after i shift the gear so clutch in i'm going a second that's how fast i release it notice that i'm not dumping it which would be just like letting my foot off of it and it kicks back as fast as possible oh okay they decided to cross the street but oh this is not a four-way stop right no i don't think so 
So we're just practicing, basically rolling into first gear, showing you guys, so you get that audio cue of me blipping the throttle. That's the really important thing with an aggressive race clutch like this, and some cars don't have enough torque to the point where you aren't able to basically roll without doing so. So when it comes to stopping, you have two options. You either can clutch in and go to neutral, or you can downshift, and we're gonna cover that soon, but we're gonna grab some lunch real quick. This is what we call the typical ass pop. Boom, just like that, we're back from lunch, so we're gonna go over reversing in the Mustang. It's kind of confusing, but what you do is put up this cup. It's a little plastic piece, and you go to the left like you're going into first gear, but it'll actually put you in reverse. Same principles apply for first gear. You give it a throttle blip while releasing, and you're reversing. Super simple. I almost feel like the best way to learn how to drive manual, especially with shifting gears, is just watch me do it. So we're gonna clutch in and go to fourth in just a second because I'm not trying to bog down the car. And it's super simple like that. Like I said before, it's just a matter of practice, 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 and at a certain point becomes muscle memory. So when I first got this car, I didn't know which gear I was going into. I was missing all the time, even during casual driving. And as you daily drive the car, that's honestly my best piece of advice is to daily drive it. You'll get really good at it in a matter of no time. On a quick side note, you don't wanna keep your foot on the clutch as you're actually sort of disengaging it. The way a clutch works is that there are two discs if you have a twin disc clutch, which I do it within this car. And when you slightly rest your foot, you're actually lifting one of those plates off and they grind together at high RPMs. Hence, you're slipping the clutch and destroying it. Now, one thing a lot of people won't agree with me with is the way that I stop. So basically, as I told you guys, I put the clutch in and I go to neutral and I stop. Other people will go ahead and leave the car in first gear with the clutch down. Down. You can do that, but that'll wear out your throwout bearing in a matter of time. It's not meant to do that. In addition, when you park your car, what I suggest you do is first pull the handbrake up to a good amount where the car won't roll anymore and put your car in gear. Sometimes the handbrake will fail and if you park on an incline or decline, the car will start rolling. Putting it in gear locks all the wheels and makes sure that it's not going anywhere. We're gonna cover aggressive driving and flooring it and going fast. So we need to hit some downshifts real quick. We're gonna red match. But it's not a total dumping action. You're kind of just sliding your foot off the clutch. It's like you kick in and you let go. It's way faster than normal driving. One thing I totally forgot to mention when you're shifting gears is that you're lifting off the gas, you're clutching in, and then as you're releasing the clutch, your foot is coming back on the gas. So we're gonna do one more pull real quick. Hopefully there's no Mexican police out here. <laughs> the final thing that I wanted to cover was rev match downshifting. So this is an opposition to just slowly releasing the clutch when you downshift. Essentially, to get good at downshifting and rev matching, you need to look at your RPMs within each respective gear. So say, for example, we're in second gear going 20 miles an hour and we're at 2,000 RPMs. This is important to remember from when you're attempting to downshift. So if we go to third gear now, and we decide to rev match, we know that we're gonna have to give the car about 2,000 RPMs and a throttle blip while you have the clutch down in order to get a clean rev match. So let's do that. That was all right, we'll give it a second shot. That wasn't my best rev match. Once again, we're gonna give it a second shot. So we're gonna go from third gear to second. We're gonna clutch in, go to second, flip the throttle and you get a smooth transition like that. That's how you rev match. It's just remembering which RPM is optimal for each gear. Now we're gonna try a fourth to third downshift. So the RPMs are a little bit different because the gearing is obviously different. So the throttle blip varies with which gear you're in and your desired speed. So let's do this. We're gonna give it a little less of a throttle blip 
and that was perfect. Now, keep in mind, you can over rev when you're rev matching. So this means you're giving it too many revs. And essentially, in my own personal opinion, it's better to over rev than not rev match at all and slip your clutch. Honestly, you're not gonna over rev the more familiar you get with rev matching. One more rev match for learning purpose. I think it's best to see what I'm doing so that you learn. Clutch in, throttle blip, release the clutch. That simple. Coming in a little bit hot. It's literally seven o'clock already. The day went by really fast, but one more thing before I let you guys go. If you're jerking the car around like crazy, you know you're not driving manual correctly. The whole point of driving manual is to be smooth, and that's how you know you're minimizing any excessive wear to the drive line or the clutch. Can you give me what I need? Just give me That just about concludes it for the manual driving tutorial. All about practice. The more seat time you have, the better you're gonna get, and the more familiar you're gonna be with banging out gears when you're driving fast. Make sure to check out that Sally merch. I'll link it on the screen, and I'll put it down in the description below. If you guys enjoyed this video, please remember to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.